dear participant on behalf of ITPLE Malabar subsection i welcome you all to this webinar this is our 42nd webinar series in the third uh, thursday webinar series organized by ITPLE Malabar subsection in association with ITPLE Malabar hub and today's uh, webinar is on performance management and kpis uh, by professor riyas ali professor riyas ali is an expert in the technology management domain with an overall experience of 15 years his research interest includes services marketing business analytics business intelligence and supply chain management he graduated from bitspilani and received an mba from anna university chennai currently he is pursuing phd from vls university chennai he has been certified as cfr ci by the british council before his appointment in fims he worked for 3 years in 3 years with km city school of business calicut he has 11 years of corporate experience in various oil companies including royal dutch shell technip sabic kuwait national petroleum company a senior reliability engineer specialized in remote monitoring and diagnostics and uh, managed a global workforce outside of uh, fims mr riyas is an experienced conference speaker engineering consultant and expert witness and an advisory member for the engineering council of india in implementing various aict training programs i welcome you sir to this webinar Uh, before handing over to you i have uh, some uh, message to the audience audience make sure that your audio is uh, muted uh, while the speaker is uh, talking so uh, you can uh, write all your queries uh, in the chat box uh, it will be answered or it will be discussed at the end of the session thank you and over to you sir okay fantastic thanks uh, shubhira ma'am for uh, such a wonderful introduction about me i would uh, also like to thank uh, the all the bearers of ieee malabar sub center for giving me this fantastic opportunity to address the crowd on a virtual platform uh, as we move on i can see um, 33 participants so far uh, in due respect of the time we will wait shall we wait a couple of minutes for others to join ma'am uh no sir we can right. okay so in this crowd in this 35 members uh, first of all uh, let me understand the my targeted audience so i have a feeling that it is a mixture of both the students <coughs> and uh, working professional so while selecting this topic and while make the detail of this topic i was i has taken extreme care you know to go on a baseline so it will be really appreciable if uh, any st the students in this among these participants can raise their hands so that i can get a judgment Can you please uh, raise your hands so that I can understand how many among these forty-one members, how many students are there, so that I can pitch or I can shift myself in the um, area where I need to touch, hardly touch. Right. I could see some three students so far. Mm, more are coming. Am I audible? So, Shubhra, ma'am, if like if uh, yes, you yes. are missing out, yes, 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 sir, you are audible. Ping me or give me a call. Yeah. Yeah, you are audible. Right. Three, six. I can give you some fifteen, ten, fifteen seconds so that we can move on. Okay. Okay. Three, six. So let me take a 
guess saying that students will be among these 45 still coming. It will be ending with the 50 numbers. So the rest 30 people uh, are either working or in the process of job hunting. Am I right? And I will expect an active participation from your end. So as your uh, Sabiksad said, if you have some concern, we can keep typing in the chat box. We will uh, take it up at the end of the Q&A session. Uh, yeah, so it goes like that. <coughs> so before we kick off, I have a question to you, all of you. What is a performance? And let us keep this as the word of the day. Can anyone say what is a performance? It is a, I know it's a very generic question. You can say in your own you know, field or where you're working. Either you could be a teacher or you could be an assistant engineer in KCB or you could be a transmission engineer or you'll be working in a power plant, whatever it is. Can you just type here uh, what is a performance? Guys, I need your participation. I don't want to give you a boring lecture. Hello. No responses. People, I want you to come out from the shop. What is performance? This room is very silent. Can anybody unmute yourself and say what is performance? Or you can type here what is performance. No response. All right. So I got from. Uh, Bhuvaneshwari saying that it's doing any work with uh, Sajid has mentioned it is changing condition status, okay? Doing an action, right? What else? Azia has mentioned it is doing an action. Guys, okay, please respond, please respond. So let us say, most of you, since this is an IEEE exclusive program, most of you might be electrical engineer is what I guess. So it could be a performance of a, your distribution transformer. It could be the efficiency of your power plant. It could be the efficiency of the grid Etc. Cetera, et cetera. It could be the efficiency of a three-phase motor. When it, if what what an aerospace engineer will or a mechanical engineer will talk about the performance. He might be worried about his engine, gas turbine engine, or he might be worried about his performance, his entire system, mechanical system, about the performance of his transmission. Transmission, in a sense, is mechanical transmission. I meant. But it moves to a salesperson. He will be worried saying that, hey guys, uh, next is this is year ending. I need to close a, lay, a lot of sales and my sales team is not performing well. This, what, this will be his language. What about a student and a teacher? Teacher will say, earlier it was very good when we are following Calgary University. Now system has become more stringent. Now, performance is not up to the mark or vice versa can be said. Earlier it was bad, now it is very good. So an HR specialist, he might say his employee is not performing well, his department is not performing well. So these are all the definition uh, of the performance in every aspects 
based on the people they used to see in their daily life. Now let us look. Uh, is my screen uh, visible to you guys? Sir, it's visible. It will be better if you uh, make it enlarge. Yeah. Good. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. All right. So as you had uh, typed in the chat box, according to the Merriam Dictionary, in simple words, it is the execution of an action or something accomplished. So now, at least for this session, this one hour, I want you to please shift your perception as an engineer to a leader or a manager. I'm damn sure you guys will be promoted as a manager in your career at any point of time as your experience clocks. We engineers, we are very good with numbers. I mean to say our analytical skills will help us to solve the issues in our workplace. Along with this analytical skill, if we can make or we can gain a little people management skill, your job is done, you are the master, right? So this topic will definitely give you an idea about how to tap the potential or how to explore or how to dig it out the potential or capacity of your team members or your subordinates at your workplace. Okay, so now let us see, we have an idea about what is performance. Now let us see, a additional word has been added along with the performance, that is performance management. Can, can you see or do you have an idea in your own domain, in your own field, how is there any performance management mechanism in your, you know, in your play, workplace? Either it could be a teacher or as I said earlier, whatever the field you are. Okay. So here, <coughs> performance management, it is a continuous process. It is a continuous process of seeing an individual and as a team, which where they will align with the strategic goal of the organization. Let us go back to school. You know, earlier in the school, it was a examination will happen yearly once, or say yearly three exams, autumn exam, Christmas exam, and the final exam. We just imagine an era where you had only one exam a year. When it moved to the engineering, when you were about to graduate, you have to learn 60 to 70 subjects or lab, labs or whatever it is, including your project. And can you just think how many assessment or how many phases or how many hurdles you have passed once you graduate your bit? See, there are series exam, the class test, series exam, then it will go to your model exam, then your university exam for every semester into eight. So this is, a, this is an assessment. And end of the day, once you graduate, your score is also like that. It is a CGPA. Am I right? Cumulative gross point average. It is accumulation. I mean to say, just connect this example with the performance management. So mean to say it is a continuous process of improving by setting an individual and team goals, which should be aligned with the strategic goals of your organization. So, uh, in order to achieve the goal or in order to be get aligned with the strategic goal of the organization, what fundamental thing we should have? Your communication with your employees should be clear. 
let me define it as a job clarity. Your employee, he should know what suppose he should be delivered or organization what it is expected from your employee. He should be clear what he should do. Once it is clear, you can set the objectives and you can identify what this guy is best good for. Sometimes a guy, uh, he may not be that technical competent, so he might be suit, he might be have a fair sales uh, pinch, he'll be good in sales. So that you should be able to identify. Based on that, you can set the goals, then you should give feedback every time, every time in a sense, continuously, like either the constructive or destructive feedback you can give. And you should review the result. So this is how a typical performance management framework works. <coughs> See, when it moves, since the performance management links the effort taken by the employee in line with the organization mission, both the parties means the employee and the organization can understand its contribution. Its contribution is the work contribution. Okay. Since the employer expectation is clear to the employee, that will really help him to realize what more he has to do to become successful. When it goes to the department perspective, so here I am giving you two perspectives, one of the employee perspective and one in the employer perspective, All right? So as it moves, the department perspective, if the objectives, standards, and performance dimensions are clear, then they can focus on what really needed and what not needed, okay? So these regular check-ins, these continuous check-in helps both the parties, both the employer and employee, to identify any deviation or any gaps so that they can take the um, corrective action at the earliest. So this is how it works. So normally this performance management, it is a big framework, right? So that will, it's a continuous process. When it go to per performance appraisal that I'll be explaining later, it is a periodic review in the colleges, you can see the audit. So it is kind of performance appraisal, but there is a result of reward in such things. So here in the audit, there may not be a reward. All right. So am I audible? Yes, yes sir. Am I audible? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, my pace is good or I should, I need to increase the speed or I need to slow down. Please give me a, is that okay with you people? Audience, you can write your comments. Uh, in the chat box. Guys, give your so that we can you know I can either increase or I can slow down the pace, okay? Or if you want to add Malayalam, no issues. So let me move on. Is there any comments? Uh, Odin saying uh, it's okay, sir. Perfect. So let us move. Uh, we have explained what is performance management. So now let us look, what is the, someone is pinging, All right? So let us look, what is the performance expectation? When I say the expectation, that means the expectation by the employer from the employee. So here in the slide, you can see, Performance expectation means result plus action and behavior. Results say it is very easy. We can say, you could see closing a sales, that's a result. Your student university result, that's a result. Your project delivery, that is a result. Uh, after the maintenance, your plan is running up, that is a result. Okay, so result plus action. Action and behavior, why I have put these two words together because uh, let us say action and behavior. Let, uh, let us say an example. The 
networking, you know, the social networking I mentioned, okay. The social networking capability or ability of a person will really help in sales or marketing. Can you agree with me? One of the fundamental criteria or one of the fundamental qualification for a marketing guy is he should have a good communication skill. Along with that, he's, he should able to create, build a network so that he can sell his product easily. Right. So this is what it meant, the actions of actions and the behavior. Right. And it is important. And another, uh, so that is one among the uh, performance dimension, performance dimension of a marketing guy. Right. So these are the, in short, these are the performance expectations. So we should have a result and company will be looking how you are achieving this result. Right. Let us say um, you are giving a good result, but your behavior in your workplace is not that good. So will that work? For a short term, it might be working, but in the long term, you might be losing your customer. So that's why when it comes to the matter of performance expectation, results along with the action and behaviors are important. Okay. Now, another thing, how we can verify whether our employees are moving on a right track or how, how we can monitor whether our employees are uh, doing their job. In this slide, you can see specific work totals. Let us say, let us hire a labor, a worker in our paddy field. Okay. I have shown him he should start by eight o'clock and he should work up to five o'clock. And I have given him tasks saying that all the uh, area, all my paddy field should be clean from all the grasses and debris. That is the scope. So how tangible we know something which we can feel. Even your employee, if he has left after his work, can we verify that? If you see your paddy field is clean, free from all the grass, all the debris, we can say, He's, he's up to the mark or he has done his job. Another thing uh, we can see, if, if you, are, you have instructed your employee to give a weekly report, I, can, I, I have seen in the colleges, uh, the head of the department will ask a weekly report to the staff to send on a, on a weekly basis. So that is another way of judging your employees is they working perfectly? So the, your expectation is he or she should send the report on Friday evening by four o'clock. Another thing, attendance, punctuality of your employee. Safety, safety means like your company will be having certain safety standards. You know, while climbing uh, stairs, he need to use the handrails. If he's finding any pinch points, he need to mention in the you know thing and some safety toolbox. Uh, see, guys, I'm uh, whenever I'm saying some examples, it is a mixture of the field and as well as the academy. Okay, this is where I have grown and I have molded up. Okay, <laughs> so in the refineries, when we work, safety is the top priority. So we always like some safety rewards will be also we we will use to give to our employees like if he's following the thing, safety measures perfectly, if he's conducting the safety toolbox perfectly. So this is what, so as, as listed like inventory, financial records, et cetera, et cetera. So we can monitor or we can verify uh, what we are expecting from employees by seeing such things. Another traditional way <coughs> of validating your employees, like you just prepare a checklist, and based on that, you will have the tick boxes. Say, hey, hey, this, if this has done this, okay, give a tick, no, cross, tick, cross, tick, cross. This is the way how it is. And the third, fourth one is like, you 
from your visible eye, naked eye, you just do a direct observation, you know, like examining whether your employee is doing his job in his schedule of time or in his designated time. This is another method. And the fourth one and the fifth one, the rating scales, these are all will be explaining when I say various methods of performance of price. And the last one, always an employer should be uh, wise enough to give whatever the feedback, either the constructive or destructive to an employee that will help him to improve himself or that will be an opportunity for him to fine tune or to clear himself before that goes out of his hand. So in short, let us say performance management, which in, in, involves three steps or three points. That is the one is the performance planning to achieve the uh, organizational goals. And number two, reviewing and assessing the progress of the employee. And third one, after assessing, you need to develop your employee, either his knowledge or his skills and ability, et cetera, et cetera. So these are all the, uh, uh, in short, these are the three um, sequences or three steps in, um, in the performance management. So as we move on, let me ask you another question, guys. What is benchmarking? I'm damn sure all these terminologies you already have here, but you might be confused where to fit in these terminologies. This is my perception about you. So can you just tell me or type here, what is benchmarking? Guys, please respond. What is benchmarking? I'm not getting any responses. Guys, please participate. Please be with me. So such a TP has mentioned is a baseline value comparison with similar field. You're right. I need some, I'm expecting uh, some other brilliant answers. Guys, please text here, what is a baseline? Sorry, what's a benchmarking? What's a benchmarking? You just type here, regardless of the area you're working, your knowledge, whatever you know, you can type. Or if you're very specific about your industry you're working, that's also absolutely right. Please type here, what is a benchmarking? No other responses. So let me uh, get stick with what Sajid has typed. So baseline value, comparison with similar field. So uh, this baseline, yeah, you're right. So this baseline, how we will set this baseline? Based on what, from where we will set a standard? How we will set this baseline? On based on what we will, let us say, when we talk about football, when we talk about football, or like the name which come in front of in, in, in our mouth is either Maradona or Pele. So that's a benchmark or Ronaldo or Cristiano Ronaldo. So these are all the benchmarking. When it comes to the cricket, it will come either Ravi Shastri or Sachin Tendulkar. It's not a debate anybody can say. So they, they are all the legends. So this is the baseline in comparing. So that is the benchmark. Okay. So... So now let us talk what are the performance standards. So performance standards, uh, this is the number, this is the terminology we should be using 
when to quantify or when to measure the performance of your employee. It's a standard point of reference against things may be compared. With respect to him, he is good. With respect to that organization, my organization is not that performing. Bharat Heavy Electricals is doing well. As compared to Bell, Hindustan Aer Aeronautics has to develop more. So these are all the benchmarking. In the similar industry can be uh, like a similar industry normally used to benchmark. Right. Normally the competitors will used to do the benchmark. So based on that, you will set a standard. That this standard, there is no standard, specific standard, uh, written, uh, there is no written standard, but there are guidelines. For example, uh, like um, in the oil and gas industry, we used to follow API, American Petroleum Institute, or ANSI. So th they all these standards, based on that, we will set our own standards, isn't it? Now, in the case of automobile, euro is a standard. Based on that, that's a, that's a standard. And in our Indian standard, we what do we say? Bharat stage, BS4 or 6. So this is how we benchmark. Right. Similarly, to assess, to uh, someone is uh, waiting in the room. Can you please admit them? So these standards, this is how we will set the standards to our organization. Okay. Now, why next, next point is why we really need a performance management system? What is the necessity? Do we really need, why, why we are talking a lot about this performance management system? Shall we really, you know, invest? See, whenever you are implementing system in an organization, it is an investment of money and it is an investment of time. So do we, do you just think, do we really need to invest all these resources, money as well as your people, human resource, for setting such management system in your organization? guys you should do it and that really worked okay so here i'll be talking about uh, there are a lot of purposes so i have minimized or i have you know uh, sum up with the six points where we will be talking a little more so the purpose of the uh, performance management system it could be the strategic perspective and the administrative perspective informational perspective, developmental perspective, organizational maintenance, and documentation. Can anyone in this crowd say, what is a strategy? Can anyone type here, what is strategy? Because in the coming, uh, in continuing with this slide or this session, I'll be using this word, strategy strategy can you please type at least one or two what is strategy guys come on please type here anybody in this crowd what is strategy Can you please type here? Audience, we expect an active participation. Please type here. Anyone can type what is a strategy? No response. So I mean to say I need to, I, sh I myself should answer. Right. So guys, strategy means it is a, a decision or it is whatever it is taken by the, uh, I had to, no response, okay. Taken by the superior 
or the higher authority or the upper crest of your organization. It could be a chairman, it could be a founder, it could be a CEO. In that level, whatever the decision they take, for that such decision, we will call the strategic decision. So while we are setting any decisions or any, let us say, let us come back to this performance management system. <clears throat> I think I need to move a little faster, six, six, five. So strategic means we need to link the individual goals. Individual goals means the individual goals of the person along with the organization goal. So that is mean the strategic purpose. Second one, when I talk about the administrative uh, purpose, administrative purpose, you know, uh, we all work for money. So the salary, the this help this performance management system will help the administrative team or administrative department to compute your salary. For example, like in your office, um, say um, you're working like uh, five days a week. Out of 30 days, if you're working some 21, 22 days and uh, you have a monthly, you can take one casual leave or two casual leave. Beyond that, you'll be deducted from your medical leave, whatever it is, LOP, whatever it is. So that is a strategy. So that if your time management system, your time your time sheet or your punching, your biometric fingerprint, whatever it is, if that is intact, if that is perfect, that will help your administrative department to take action or to whatever it is. So that is the data they can take, pull out. So then promotion, based on various criteria, your qualification, your number of your experience, your teaching methodology, your feedback about your students, whatever it is. So based on the based on all these things your superiors they can uh, decide the your promotion your retention your termination you know layoff whatever it is so if you uh, so these are all the input these administrative departments will take and the third one is the informational informational means the performance management system will help to you know communicate uh, the strategy or the mission vision or the information from the upper crest to the bottom layer. So, or, or that will be help us to cascade the information to the lower level. So this is all about the information or also like how your employees are doing. Is there any area to improve? Such things will be, such information will be pulled out from the performance management system. And another one is the developmental action you know uh, developmental action means um, you know your employees if a staff your hired staff or your employees he, he, if he's doing the same job every day do you think that he will grow no for that you know as the technology changes he need to be changed he also should be aligned with that what he should be aware on what the industry what is happening in his surroundings so that what he need if you buy a new, if you purchase a new equipment, you need to send your operator. If you're buying from Italy, you need to send your operator to Italy for the training. This is how it works. So I mean to say the developmental activities. So uh, if your performance management system is intact, intact means perfect. That automatically trigger the point where your training I will let me use a word TNA training need analysis. So you will understand whether your employee should be sent for training. All right. Uh, the teachers, I can see you're, uh, you, go, you we used to go for uh, faculty development programs. This is a developmental program. Like, what is the intention of FDPs? What is happening in the industry that need to be? taught or it need to be shared with the academia. So this is the meaning of the MD, either MDP or FDP. Right, now let's see what the organizational maintenance. Organizational maintenance, you know, uh, this is similar to the, or it is a continuity, continuity of the developmental uh, task. Here, 
you know, the future training needs or evaluating the organization at the employee level as well as the organizational level and also measuring the effectiveness of your people, both the efficiency and effectiveness. So, uh, guys, I hope you know what's the difference between efficiency and effectiveness. Yeah, I'm not throwing a question to you. I'm not asking right away to, uh, to reply me right away, but just if you know, you just refresh it. If you don't know, just Google it. What is the difference between efficiency and effectiveness? All right. So these are all the organizational maintenance input. They will be pulled out from the performance management system. And the last one, it is all about the documentation. See, any system, any organization, uh, there is no point that we are doing this, we are doing that. Everything needs to be documented. So uh, let us say your staff uh, attendance. Let us say the number of training attended. Let us say the number of projects delivered. Let us say the number of your customer complaint. All these need to be documented. This can be used for the audit purpose later on, or sometimes we may be jumping from the organization. So this might be a knowledge base in industry we used to call knowledge management nowadays. Yeah, so the like the next generation, they will also know what has happened in this organization. So based on that, if some incident happened, so whatever it is, always this document helps, gives input in such initiative or in such requirements. Right, so now let me move for the best tools for performance management. This, you can also see the steps in performance management. See, in this slide, you can say, let me make it big. Am I audible, guys? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Audible. All right. So in this slide, you can see the five best tools. I could see some message. I could see five best tools for performance management. Or I will say, these are all the steps in performance management. First, first thing first, we need to set the goal or goal framework. Next, we will define what we need to gain, what is our objective. After that, we will be setting the KPI, that is the second part of the discussion, what we are about to start key performance indicator. Then once that is set, we will be talking about the performance discussions. Once discussion, your team is aligned or he's agreed mutually what and your people are, know what he supposed to do and you are okay with that, your employees, employee, employer is okay with or mutually agree, then we need to give him reward and recognition if he has performed his task. So this, in short, this is how your performance management framework. Now let's see. <coughs> Can you please admit the people who are coming? In? So uh, this among these tools, I helped in my like as as briefed. Apart from the academy, I used to give consultation to the companies like the, either the startups or the sinking organization where the organization is, you know, um, not performing well. So I have few clients, so uh, I help in uh, like, uh, see, I have observed a common thing I have observed here is most of them, their performance management process is not working. Okay, so I thought I will share this with you. Uh, these five tools or these steps in the performance management, what an organization should be using. Okay. So the first one, for me, it has to start with a goal framework. That is basically a layout. What the uh, vision of the business or where you want to go and then a small number of strategic goals. In idea, we put in a piece of paper and then outline here there are 
10, 5, 10, 15 things we really need to sort out of the business in order to be successful. What this will do is this becoming a powerful communicating tool that everyone in the business, so that is a clarity, guys. That is a clarity. That means everyone, this powerful communicating tool, I would say this performance management is, well, setting this framework, it is a powerful communicating tool. That means everyone in the business can understand what the goals are with the organization supposed to accomplish, and I should align myself according to that. All right. So that is setting the goals, the goal framework. So the second one, once you have done with this, the second step is that you need to define the objectives. And for me, this has to be a regular process. It's, it should be a continuous process where we start at the top of the organization and it's okay to order to help us to achieve our goals. We need to, you know, we need to set some objectives. And these objectives need to be clearly defined and cascaded to the organization in the bottom line. Not necessary that it should be cascaded from right top to the bottom. Sometimes it is better uh, to actually have this as a more natural process where everyone in the organization are more simultaneously define their objectives by making sure that they are aligned with the organizational goals. And the, as I move on, and my third one is, I will set some matrices or KPI. KPI means the key performance indicator. You know what, you have an idea what is matrices. In mathematics, we have a lot of matrices, right? So simply rows and columns. So here, in the, in the, the, the third thing is that the, we need matrices or KPIs. So we need to measure the result. We have set the goals. Our people are working well. Now we need to quantify this. Uh, can we say, uh, my employees are working well? It's very weird statement. I could say, my factory is running with a production capacity of 80%. That is something quantifiable. All right. Efficiency can be quantified. So it should be like that. So everyone in the organization should have a KPI. Your, organize, your strategic goal should be aligned with your organization KPI. Your strategy, the, your upper crest of your organization, your bosses, not your immediate boss, your, you know, your CEO or the owner of the company, owner of the business. He's the boss, he's the founder. He should have a vision, mission, and uh, you should have a strategy for work. By 2025, we should be exporting a software of you know, 100 billion US dollars. Or right now we have, these are all the strategies. You know? uh, by as of today, we have 500 employees and we are operating in three countries. By end of, the, uh, end of 2025, we should, be, we should have 1,000 employees and we should be at least working in the five continents, or at least we should be, uh, you know, investing more in Asia Pacific. So these are all the strategies. So that is the vision of your uh, boss, and that should be the key performance indicator of the your organization. And individual should have a KPI. So your boss, your immediate line manager, your superior. He should have a KPI. An individual as a person, you should have a KPI. But there's a common thing, all these, you know, the cheese, Swiss cheese. So all these need to be aligned. Your KPI should be aligned with your boss KPI. His KPI should be aligned with your departmental KPI. And at the end of the day, it's a time, end of the day, all this need to be aligned with the organizational KPI that should be perfectly aligned with the strategy of your organization. And fourth one, I would say it is the performance discussions. So in practice, uh, I have seen this, is, this process is usually very broken in the organization. So they have an annual performance review meetings and where individual with the line managers to go through a script, you know, it is a it is a boring, like it is a 
traditionally this is happening. Uh, you know, you'll be sitting with your boss, your line manager, and there'll be script, well-defined script. Uh, he will ask you, will you be doing the next quarter? You will say yes. Uh, why you didn't this in the last quarter? Oh, sir, sorry, sir, I, I couldn't make it. So these are all the discussion happen, happening in the industry, even though we will tell all this theory part. So for me, what has to, for me, what has to happen is this meeting has to be done in a regular basis. I would say weekly or monthly check-in where you have discussion, where again, hopefully if your goals framework come out the way you look at your own objectives and you refine them and you set ambitious goals for the future. And these decisions have to be where, they, where it is. So that is the performance discussion. And the last tool or the last step in the performance management is the reward and recognition. We will say an individual or your employee who has worked well, who has contributed to the organization, who has delivered whatever the um, assigned task, he need to be rewarded well and recognized. Those who haven't done their job, the serious action or whatever the strategy adopted by your organization that should be followed. So these are all the, in short, these are all the five best tools for performance management. So this kind of reputation, so in lack of time, I'm just skipping this slide. So now let me quickly go through various performance appraisal methods. Uh, we will normally classify into the traditional methods and the modern method. So uh, I had a plan, uh, sir, uh, I have a plan of you know explaining all this. So the traditional method, I will just quickly move all these things. So the traditional method, there are the ranking method, paired comparison, grading method, forced choice method, checklist method, then uh, critical incident method, then graphic scale, rating scale method, essay method, so and so. And when it moves to the traditional method, we have the MBO, management by objective, then BARS, behaviorally anchored rating scale, assessment centers, 360 degree appraisal method, and cost accounting method. So uh, as I said, I had a plan of explaining this traditional method. So let me, uh, is there anything to be taken out from here? Ranking method, you know, you'll be um, uh, listing your employees based on the rank, like number one, number two, number three, number four. And the paired comparison means, you know, if you have four employees, A, B, C, D, so you'll be comparing A with B, A with C, A with D, similarly B with, so, so such kind of comparison. And the grading, grading method means, you know, you, you'll be setting certain right to employees and forced choice method, you know, uh, you'll be asking them to list out a few statements, the positive statement and the uh, negative statement from that you will uh, evaluate your employees. And the critical uh, checklist method, that is a very traditional method where what they will do is, you know, you'll have a typical checklist, like, you know, uh, auditing checklist. So based on that, they will tick, 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 and they will cross whatever it is appropriately. So graphic rating scale. So, you know, it is a graphic rating scale is also known as a linear scale, you know, uh, Likert scale or whatever it is. From the degree of freedom, I would say zero to five. So up to five, I'm giving uh, very good, good, bad, very bad. So such kind of um, wordings you can use based on your the taste of your organization. Then essay method, you will ask. Uh, essay method, uh, you should not be confused that your employee will not be writing an essay. Your boss will be writing a short description about yourself. Based on that, your appraisal is done. And the field review, field review means from your central corporate head office, people will come along with their trainer and they will ask you to, you know, do various exercises like, uh, you know, uh, case studies, uh, role play, such things they will ask you to do. From that, they will judge, based on that, they will judge you, your performance. And the confidential, uh, is, am I audible? Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. And the 
confidential report this is basically normally followed in the government organizations where uh, it is also known as the annual uh, it is it is uh, this report is uh, produced on a year, yearly basis and uh, normally the government organization this they follow this confidential report so let us move to the next one that is the modern method uh, so he here i have listed five MBO management by objectives, behaviorally anchored rating scale, and uh, assessment centers, 360 degree appraisal, and cost accounting method. So the MBO means like <coughs> management by objectives. Here, employer will be defining, will be clearly defining objectives to his employees it will be judged accordingly. That is a short way how we can describe the MBO. Second one, behaviorally anchored rating scale. You know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, most of your employees will be working. They'll be working eight hours. But our point is how they are working. How is their behavior? How is their behavior to themselves? How is their behavior to their fellow members? How is their behavior to the uh, customer? How is the behavior to the stakeholders, shareholders, to your superiors, et cetera, et cetera. So inter, inter department, intra department, interdiscipline, intra discipline. So these are all the, uh, based on these, it will be scaled. And the third one is the assessment centers. So various, you know, uh, variables might have defined and you will assess your employee based on these uh dimensions or these variables they are following so that is the assessment center way of uh, performance appraisal and the most commonly used or i would say the 360 degree appraisal is happening in the industry nowadays i'm not saying this this is the only one happening but many of them are following this 360 degree appraisal system here what is like 360 as you know in the angle from zero to 0 to 90, 180, 270, and 360. So I mean, so it is a one rotation. So here it is like feedback about you. You means you as an individual is taken out from all the aspects. About, a Mr. about an individual, about an employee, feedback will be taken from his colleague, his superior, his customer, his vendor, his stakeholders so mean to say <coughs> who are all this person is doing business or he's engaged or he's you know interacting in a day-to-day -day business feedback from will be collected from all these sources that is the 360 degree price and the last one is the cost accounting method cost accounting method is you know simply we can say if you keep your employee are you generating any monetary benefit to the organization? I'm giving you salary. What benefit I'm getting from you? If you are generating cash to me, it's fine. Otherwise, I need to think the alternative. Either I need to throw you out and I need to bring my, the, I need to find a replacement for you. So as the name insist or from the name itself we can say cost accounting method means just assessing whether this guy is generating cash to the business right so now let us say what is a performance appraisal process i have listed some six activities and we will quickly move discuss one by one first thing we should have a which assessment method we should follow from this traditional methods or this modern method either bars mbo or the ranking method or the 360 degree or the whatever it is cost centric so we first we need to define which appraisal method we should follow after that at the uh, let us put it in this way, in our organization, 
we will do this performance appraisal quarterly basis. So Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. You know we are now in the Q4, right? So <coughs> uh, here, uh, let me ask, uh, I don't know, let me check. Do you know what is the job expectation? Before I talk about job expectation, uh, do you know what is job description or job specification, such kind of terminologies? Can we, any idea guys? Can you quickly type if anybody knows this, what is a job description? I can wait 10 or 15 seconds. Job description. It means what an employee, what a worker should do in sitting in his desk or what the organization is expecting. Can we say, uh, if you're giving a newspaper advertisement, can we say, I need an electrical engineer? It will be really weird. Can I say electrical engineer with three year experience or five year experience? It, is, it looks weird. Can I say, but I can say in this way, electrical engineer with fire experience who have a experience in power plant. That makes sense, right? Again, if you go deep, power plant with maintenance of gas turbine generators or uh, VFDs. So such that is the job description, or we can say he should be good with preventive maintenance, corrective maintenance, periodic maintenance. He should be computer literated, say, he should be good with SAP in the material management module or the plant maintenance module. These are all the job, job description. You can list and you can give to your employee and you should sit with him and you, everything you need to draft, you need to write in paper and you sit, both of you sit together and you do. And step number three, individual appraisal on employee performance are conducted. In like when I was working in industry, what we used to do, I used to sit my, with my boss. We will have a chit chat and he will take out the paper. I will also have the same copy. I will ask, he'll be having certain, you know, um, uh, performance appraisal dimensions and uh, like, you know, quality of work, timeliness and, you know, use of resources, how I have been used of resources, whether I have the enough time for writing, whether I have the budget to write my time, then I have, whether I have attended any training plan, my training plan, whether I have attended any training so far, is there any sufficient budget to attend the training? So these are all the questions. Or is there any plan of, you know, am I looking for any um, job change within the organization? For example, if there is an opening coming in the um, Nigeria LNG. So internally, they'll be posted in the, you know, in our uh, internal system. So if I, I have a plan of change, shifting my career, like from the engineer to a manager, or if I'm working the upstream, I need to work in the downstream. If I'm working in the you know, uh, field, if I'm going to offshore. So these are all things I need to write in my, uh, during my performance appraisal process. Then we will sit with your boss and he will also have something to say to you. Hey, what you've done is perfectly right. What you've done in this area, you lack. You need to do some more, you need to be more competent. You need to do a research. Your qualification is fine, but if you do, you need to do this certification project man, PMP certification. So this is all the thing he will be saying to you. Okay, so that is the one-to-one -one discussion. After that, we will set the future goals, and that should be aligned. That should be agreed with both the parties that you and your boss. Then you will sign this. He will also sign this, and he will be sending to this to his regional manager, his boss. And his boss, he will be signing and he will be sending to the human resource department. This is typically happening in the industry, how a performance appraisal. So mean to say in some organization uh, during my visit, I have seen they will do a performance appraisal in a yearly twice. Most of them, uh, the advantage, as I mentioned earlier, the advantage of doing this performance appraisal in a quarterly basis is like, you know, if you are deviating somewhere, if overall strategy has changed, that can be reflected or that can be aligned in the bottom level itself. All right. 
And now, our last point for the day, that is the KPI. So that is the key performance indicator. We have defined our employee, he should be working like this, he should be doing this, blah, blah, blah. So now we need to measure whether we need to quantify it. So key performance indicator is a mechanism which used to quantify the performance done by your employee. So I mean to say, we can say, uh, host, give me two to three more minutes, I'll wind up. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Right. So the key performance indicators, let us say that is a linking factor. That's a bridge between the organizational vision to the individual action or the work done by the individual. It's a link between the individual to the organizational vision. So KPI, we have a, in somewhere I had here around, I had mentioned what is KPI. So you're based on the strategy of your organization, your department, your organization will have a KPI and um, your um, boss will be having a KPI and of course individual will have a KPI. So now let us look in the energy sector. Like you see always, there is no standard variables for setting a KPI, but there is a rule of thumb. You should not have many KPIs. Ideal, no <coughs> Ideal number of KPIs can be between four to 10, that is an ideal number. Now let us look into this uh, slide. Here see, I have uh, exclusively picked this for you. That means, you know, you can see average cost per megawatt produced. Average number of hours to complete a maintenance task of your plant. Average revenue per megawatt. Grid, electrical grid load, equipment failure road, mean time between failure, MTBV, a number of complaints received, number of new connections, number of disconnections, number of power failures occurred. So these are an example. So based on your need, based on your visionary, based on your boss or based on the strategist, based on your uh, boss, what they say, they can set the KPI. All right. Now, let us see, as I mentioned, it should not be many KPI should not be there. And here I'm using another word, it's a smart KPI. It should be specific, it should be measurable, it should be achievable, it should be relevant, and it should be time bounded, right? And the, now let us see, we will end up uh, this uh, session with this slide. Uh, please be keen, uh, you will get an idea how to set an individual and team and organizational KPI, right? As I said, these three should be aligned, individuals, team, or the team lead, and the organizational KPI. Now see, you see the first point, organizational vision. Here an example, your boss, like your chairman, he has said in this 2021, he need to have a high customer satisfaction and he need to give superior service to the customer. When it comes down, when it cascaded down to the objective, we will set no, customer, dissatisfied customer should be, be reduced by 25% at least. That is a realistic figure. When it comes down to the organizational KPI, let us say customer complaint, the number of customer complaint that remain unsolved at the end of the week. So it is a little more bigger picture. When it comes to the team members goal, hey, he need to increase the number of satisfactory complaint resolution or say number of dissatisfied customer. So satisfactory level should be increased by 15 percentage. When it comes down to an individual KPI, we can give him a target saying that weekly percentage difference in complaint handled and the result in satisfied customer against the unsatisfied customer. So this is how 
as I said, there is no standard format in setting the dimensions or the setting the variables in while setting a KPI. But this is this will give an idea how it should be, right? With that, uh, I have done. So in summary, uh, let us say performance management is a continuous process of improving performance by setting individual and team goals which are aligned to the strategic goals of the organization. Number one, in a performance management process, setting the goal framework, define the primary objective, setting the KPA or the matrix, then we'll go for the performance discussion, then rewards and recognition. And performance management is more of process centric, whereas performance appraisal is a people centric. So uh, I would say performance appraisal is a subset of performance management process. And KPI is linking activity to the vision and strategy of the organization. And KPI is a quantifiable metric that reflect how well an organization is achieving its stated goals and objectives. So and at last, KPI of an individual team and organization shall be aligned with the strategic goals. So team, with this, uh, I have done uh, my session. So now let us uh, give five minutes for a Q&A. Any doubt, guys? Guys, if you have any concern, uh, not concern, any doubt, please type here. If I can, yeah. Thank you, Sajid. Thank you, Mr. Janathanan. Please type your doubts, please. Please, please type. Can you please? All oh, right. So, uh, Mr. So, if there's a few, so, Mr. Sajid here has asked about the balance scorecard. So that is a separate topic. I, earlier, I had a plan of including this balance scorecard also in this session. Uh, you know, in short, I would say some idea. Okay. So we will take it offline. You can ping me if you really need to know about balance scorecard. Uh, in single line, I can say you, these KPI, you can take input, these inputs, which is which you have mentioned in the KPI, these can be taken as an input to your balance scorecard, right? So that is how I can define here. So Sajid, please ping me personally. Uh, we'll have a chat on this. Or we'll keep some session exclusively for say, setting the balance scorecard or some BCG matrix, some strategical things we will um, organize later. Any other doubts, please? Any question? So there is a question. Yeah. Is there any relationship between KPI and capability maturity model? Capability maturity model, uh, no, there is no relationship. Direct, there is no directly direct relationship. But in a long run, if we really want to connect, we can connect.
so so i think we can uh, wind up now 6:45 okay sir sabik sir yeah okay so next i invite uh, dr sabik for expressing the word of thanks yeah uh, uh, i believe that uh, participant had a wonderful session uh, he had uh, covered many aspects of uh, of a system where uh, performance uh, matters very highly and uh, he has discussed about uh, how you can judge the performance of a individual as well as the system and uh, setting up of a performance index uh specifically kpis which are very important so it was a wonderful session and i believe that all participants have gained something uh from this uh, and on behalf of ieee malaba subsection i would like to thank uh, uh, professor riyas uh, for uh, sparing one hour with us and uh, and accepting our invitation and readily uh, coming over uh, online and giving this wonderful session so i once again thank you sir okay thanks a lot thanks a lot and, and yeah, uh, i have request to all of you whatever you have heard please try to stories as fine please try to implement these things in your workplace please try to implement yeah, yeah, yeah. of course right. you will find the result all right so yeah. let us wind up once again thank you thanks to i triple for giving me this opportunity all right and love um, it's time for me to say you bye bye see you next time okay thank you sir i i also thank all the participants who have uh, taken their time to attend this particular session thank you from ieee malabar subsection thank you uh, thank you sir uh, participants uh, your feedback form is shared uh, in the chat window you can fill that and after filling that you can uh, leave the session thank you